I attended preschool at age three, where I learned songs, activities, and participated in the annual sports day. Then at age four, I moved to Hawaii and attended Kuhio Elementary School. At the same time, my mother, a single mom and Japanese native, attended KCC while working a part-time job. It was not an easy life, for food was scarce, and at times my mother would have to starve herself just to make sure I had enough to eat for the day. Fortunately, my grandmother held a good business in Japan and was able to send us some money. Growing up, I experienced difficulty in school, for I was still learning the English language. I was also not very active, aside from recess and PE. My mother did not have time and could not afford to sign me up for outside sports organizations because of our financial situation. And we could only afford to purchase food with high fat content, for the low fat organic type foods were significantly expensive. Therefore, with the lack of exercise and nutrition, I became obese. In 2001, my mother got remarried, and through my mother's remarriage, our financial situation improved dramatically, which allowed us to consume quality foods. My stepfather encouraged me to get involved and introduced me to sports. From this moment, I saw dramatic improvement academically, socially, and physically. Sports has helped me grow as a person and is an incentive for me to achieve my goals in academics and athletics. Because of my past situation in dealing with obesity, this project has inspired me to promote and educate children in the importance of physical fitness in order to prevent them from becoming obese. Healthy People 2010 identified overweight and obesity as one of 10 leading health indicators and called for a reduction in the number of children and adolescents who are overweight and obese. According to the results of the 2007-2008 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey using measured heights and weights, approximately 16.9% of children and adolescents aged 12 through 19 are obese. According to the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, 35 out of 50 states in 2009 had obesity rates of 25% or higher. That's 70% of the entire country. Hawaii, as of 2009, has an obesity rate of 22.3%. Approximately $75,051 million are spent annually on medical costs of obesity. Overweight and obese individuals are at increased risk for many diseases and health conditions, including hyperextension, osteoarthritis, dyslipidemia, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, stroke, gallbladder disease, sleep apnea, respiratory problems, and various forms of cancer. According to the Census Bureau's most recent poverty report for 2009, the official poverty rate was at 14.3%. That means 43.6 million in the United States live in poverty. This is the highest rate since 1994. With the shortage and scarcity of money, families are faced with the opportunity cost of purchasing cheap fast food or spending more on healthy organic foods. By purchasing unorganic foods, they may be consuming numerous toxins and pesticides that are harmful to the body. That is why physical fitness is essential to maintain a healthy lifestyle and prevent from becoming obese. Not only does physical fitness and exercise improve health, but it has also been proven to benefit brain development and has been shown to make children smarter. According to Natural News and the New York Times, in the journal Brain Research released on September 15, 2010, Scientists used MRIs to measure the size of specific structures in the brain of 49 children ages 9 through 10. They discovered that the hippocampus tended to be significantly larger in kids who were physically fit, and the fit children performed better on memory tests than those of the same age who were out of shape. In the book titled Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise by the American College of Sports Medicine, a study was conducted to determine the effect of physical activity on academic achievement in middle school children. 
Through their study, they found that physically fit children developed an increase in self-esteem and improved classroom behavior as well as academic performance. Physical fitness has shown to help children worldwide improve academically. Ray Pika, a children's physical activity specialist since 1980, reports in her article titled More Movement, Smarter Kids that a Canadian study showed academic scores went up when a third of the school day was devoted to physical education. In France, children who spent eight hours a week in physical education demonstrated better academic performance than those with only 40 minutes a week. To find out more and hear an expert's opinion, I interviewed Peter Balding, who obtained his master's at the University of Hawaii in educational administration with an emphasis on elementary PE. He also received a bachelor's in sports medicine from Pepperdine University. He has been teaching PE for 13 years here at Punahou, and here's his thoughts on physical fitness and sports. It stimulates parts of the brain that challenges them to, to problem solve. Look at the kids that are in the bioswale, that are jumping from one rock to the next, that are building they're taking rocks in there and they're building stuff and they're, they're looking at how does this work and how does that work and, and they're on one foot and they're balancing and stuff. All of that goes into you know their ability to play there because they've engaged different parts of their brain relative to problem solving and their movements. To me team sports is, is all about relationships. It teaches you how to you know interact with other people, what's an appropriate behavior, how can I help you, how can you help me, um, I can't have it my way, you know, we got to have it our way, um, how can I help this relationship, you know, what can I be doing to it, it the people that struggle um, in that regard in society, I think, haven't learned that haven't learned that concept of that the relationships is, is two ways. It's it's us working together. It's not I gotta have it my way and you know what, if I don't have it my way, I'm out of here. You know? I, I, you know what? I, I, this marriage thing isn't working. I'm, I'm out of here. You know, I'm divorced. You know, it's like According to the early show's Debbie Turner, only 6% of schools in the United States offer daily physical education classes. Therefore, in my effort to fill the gap, become a participatory citizen, and to give back to the community, I conducted a PE class for the children at Head Start as my action for this project. The Head Start program is a nonprofit organization that provides education for children of low-income homes who often cannot afford to play in organized sports and have unhealthy eating habits due to their family's financial situation. On the first day, because of bad weather conditions, we could not do any outdoor activities. Therefore, we read a book and practiced breathing and doing yoga. On the second day, we did some outdoor activities, beginning with some stretching exercises. Then we worked on catching and throwing, did drills using a ladder, and practice kicking a ball. The children were energetic and seemed to enjoy exercising. As a result of my research and work with the children, I have learned about the importance of physical fitness in early childhood development. I was able to connect it with my current child development course I am taking this semester, focusing on brain, behavior, and social development in young children and adolescents. The first few years of a child's life is of greatest importance, for this is when children can obtain the most information. That is why it is important to educate children at a young age about the significance of physical fitness and exercise in their daily lives so that they may prosper and live a healthy life.